The subject of this Irish folklore video was chosen by my patrons on Patreon. You can help vote to decide what kind of content I make by signing up for as little as one dollar a month. Bulgeen, where are you going with that shovel? Uh, uh, I'm just going to go make a leprechaun. Tell me where it buried its gold. Are you really? Are you sure that's a good idea? But, but, but why would it be a bad idea? Leprechauns can be very tricky. You know, Harry Stottle once tried to catch a leprechaun himself. <laughs> How did we get here? A long ago, before we forgot, Harry Stottle was going for a walk through the woods when he heard a sound like a ticking clock. But that didn't make any sense. There was no clock out there in the woods. There wasn't any kind of like Narnian lamppost situation going on. And he wasn't wearing a watch that day either. So he went looking for the source of the sound, through the bushes and hedges. And he pulled back some leaves, and under a bush, he found a tiny man, only three fists tall. And he was tapping away on a wee little shoe with a wee little hammer. That was the ticking sound. And Harry, he thought to himself, this is a leprechaun. And I have rent you! So he grabbed the leprechaun and he shook it. And he said, Leprechaun, I command you to tell me where your gold is. And the leprechaun said, <sighs> Fine. I buried it under that tree. But that was a problem for Harry. I don't know about any of you watching. But when he went for a walk in the woods, he didn't really bring a shovel with him. And that makes digging for gold very difficult. But if he went home and he got a, sho a shovel, sure the leprechaun, he was only going to move the gold on him. So he shook the leprechaun again. And he said, leprechaun, I command you to tell me where your gold is. And the leprechaun said, <sighs> I promise I won't move the gold. And that was enough for Harry because Harry knew perfectly well that once a leprechaun has made a promise, it won't be able to break it, no matter how hard it tries. But with so many trees out there in the woods, how would Harry remember which tree the gold was under? Now thinking about this, he realised it was the middle of spring. Every tree was bright green. So the red socks he was wearing that day would stand out. Now he slipped off one of his red socks. He tied it to a branch of the tree and he shook the leprechaun again. And he said, leprechaun, promise me, when I go get a shovel, you won't move that sock. I promise, I won't touch the sack. And that was that. Every problem was solved, nothing else was in his way. So he ran back home and he grabbed a shovel and he brought it to the lake and he looked around him. And he dropped the shovel and he fell to his knees in frustration. Because now, every single tree had a red sock tied to it. So we had to go home empty-handed. So are you sure you want to take the gold from a leprechaun? I think that I can be cleverer than silly old Harry Stottle. Are you sure that's a good idea, Bulgy? Leprechauns can be very dangerous, 
You know, Harry Stottle once tried to steal the gold from a leprechaun himself. You already said that. How did we get here again? Long ago, before we forgot, in the town of Baliocras, there was a fairy hill. And it had long been rumoured that there was some kind of secret treasure buried under that hill. But there was no door in the side of the hill, and there was no hole in the top of the hill that you might go through. And nobody was stupid enough to dig into a fairy hill, so no one had ever managed to ascertain the truth of this rumour. And one morning, Harry Stottle, he was hard at work in a field right by the hill. And he had the sweat dripping off him when he heard a sound just behind him. But turning around, he saw that a doorway had opened up in the side of the hill, and he thought to himself, well now, that wouldn't be digging, now would it? I'm sure if I find the treasure in there, I'll never have to work in this field ever again, will I? And so he goes into the hill, and he finds himself in a big room lined with bronze, and in the centre a table with a big pot of gold in the middle, a pot filled with gold coins. And he thinks to himself, well, somebody less clever than I would just take as much of this gold as they could before running, maybe even take the whole pot. But the fairies would notice, the leprechaun would notice. I have a better idea. So he took the cap off his head to use it as a little bag, and he took only a few coins from the very top, hoping that by taking so few no one would notice the difference. And he had just enough that he felt like he'd never need to work again when he heard a voice from behind him. What do you think you're doing? With my gold, Harry Stuttle. And Harry turned around. He gave out a shout in shock and dropped his cap. And when he turned, he saw behind him a little leprechaun in a little red cap standing in the doorway. And Harry, in fright, in terror, knowing that the leprechaun could do something terrible to him with its magic, he ran straight through the door, pushing past the leprechaun, and didn't stop running until he got home. And the next morning, when Harry woke up, he wasn't feeling very well. His limbs felt just a little bit heavier. His sleep had just been a little bit less refreshing. He was just the smallest bit less able to do his work, to do his daily tasks. And as the days wore on, this got worse and worse. His limbs became heavier and heavier, his footsteps slower and more difficult, until finally one day he wasn't able to get out of bed at all. And when that day came, there was a knock on the door. And when Harry's mother opened the door, who was outside but the little leprechaun? Now he pushed his way into the house and trotted right up to Harry's bedside. And the leprechaun said, Ah, uh, Harry, shall I look at the state of you? What's happened to you at all? Sure, the, the last month, Harry, you were over at my house, and you were very rude, I have to say, you were terribly rude. You just shoved right past me, you didn't say hello or anything. And sure, Harry, in your rush, you dropped your lovely cap. The leprechaun handed the cap to Harry, and Harry, taking it in his hands, felt something inside. And with his hands weak and trembling, he reached in and found two gold coins. And he thought to himself, of course, of course, this illness 
has all been a punishment for trying to steal the leprechaun's gold. These coins must mean that I've been forgiven. I'll be well again, thank God. The leprechaun saw Harry staring at the gold coins, and he said, Ah, don't worry about the gold there, Harry. That's just to pay for the funeral. Sure, I only came here to watch you die. And he did. The leprechaun stood there by Harry's bedside for hours, watching the life seep out of Harry Stottle's eyes. The vicious little bastard. Do you see how dangerous leprechauns can be? How do you keep moving us around? Are you sure all the danger is worth it to steal the gold? I think I, I, I could be careful, so I won't get hurt. Are you sure that's a good idea, Bulgeen? Leprechauns might not be as rich as you think they are. You know, Harry Stottle once tried to steal a leprechaun's gold himself. I thought Harry Stottle was dead. Long ago, before we forgot, in the town of Ballyuclus, there was a fairy hill. And it was rumoured that there was some kind of treasure hidden inside guarded by a leprechaun. How everyone knew about the leprechaun, the leprechaun could always be heard through the woods, tapping away on the little shoes it made with its little hammer. Because as everyone knows, leprechauns, they're cobblers. They make shoes for the fairies. Now Harry Stottle, he had heard all about all of this. All about the gold under the hill, all about the leprechaun. And he devised a plan. You see, many people had tried to capture the leprechaun and force it to reveal where the gold was to give them the gold. And as some people had managed to capture the leprechaun, but they were always outsmarted, they were always tricked. They were always forced to release the leprechaun before it could show them how to get the gold. And Harry, he wasn't going to be tricked. And so he went and he set up everything he thought he'd need. And so, when he thought he was ready, he went into the woods and he listened for that tap, tap, tap. When eventually he heard it, he took his bag and his rope and very quietly snuck through the undergrowth. Eventually he saw it. There was the leprechaun sitting upon a puka pel, a kind of mushroom, tapping away on a wee little shoe with a wee little hammer. A sneaking through the bushes and the hedges, Harry, he came up behind the leprechaun, and taking his sack, he drew it over the leprechaun's head and tied it up with the rope. He carried the leprechaun over to the little camp he had prepared earlier. He had a tent and a shovel and a place for a fire, all piled up with wood and ready to burn. And he lit the fire and he tended to it, making sure the flames were good and high and hot. And when he was satisfied, he pulled the leprechaun out of the sack, tied it up in the rope, and then pulled off its little shoes. He held the leprechaun with its feet in the flames, and he said, Leprechaun, you will tell me how to get your gold. And the leprechaun struggled and screamed and cried like, No, please, no, don't do this to me, Harry, please. But Harry, he wouldn't listen. He said, I will not let you go until I have your gold or your promise that you will tell me where it is. And the leprechaun pleaded with him, please, please, Harry Stottle, please. 
I can't give you all me gold, but I promise, I promise, if you let me go, I'll give you half. Harry thought about this. Half of a leprechaun's gold, surely that must still be an outrageous fortune. Well, once a leprechaun has made a promise, it won't be able to break it, so he could definitely trust it. He pulled the leprechaun away from the fire. It helped tend to its burned feet, gave it back its little shoes, and the leprechaun ran off into the woods. But only about five minutes later, the leprechaun came back with a little bag. He gave it to Harry and then left, giving him a look of anger and sadness and hurt. Now Harry, he didn't care. He took the bag and he looked inside. There wasn't as much gold as he thought. When he brought it to the bank, it was only worth about £500. Oh, it would be enough to make the house a bit more comfortable. Enough to maybe get him some cows, but... Not enough to justify what he'd done. Not to himself. And so no one lived happily ever after. And so, I'm sorry to say, nobody involved lived happily ever after. Harry lived a little bit more comfortably, but the memory of what he'd done, it haunted him for the rest of his life. Stars above! I didn't know Harry Stottle could be so vicious. You have to take drastic measures getting gold from leprechauns, Bulgeen. Very few people have managed it without having to do something like that. I, 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 I don't think that I'd like to do that to anybody. Not for any reason. Not for a whole mountain of gold. And it would be a lot less than a mountain of gold. I don't think it would be worth it. One could even say that leprechauns represent an oppressed working class. James Connolly! Yes, it is I, James Connolly, union leader, socialist writer, and hero of the 1916 Rising. The danger and difficulty in stealing from the leprechaun could be seen as the folly of the working classes turning on each other, the foolishness of class treason. You're not a class traitor, are you, Bulgeen? No, Mr. James Connolly, sir. I'm not a class traitor. Leprechauns can actually be comrades. You know, Harry Stottle once tried to steal a leprechaun's gold himself. I don't want to hear any more about Harry bleeding Stottle. Long ago... Before we forgot, Harry Stottle was working in the vegetable market out on Abbey Street in Dublin City. And one day, he was taking in a delivery from County Waterford. And as, as he was unloading the crates from the van, he heard a strange sound from inside one of the crates. And he thought to himself, oh no. Rats have gotten into the crate again. I hate it when that happens. So he took his crowbar. He very carefully prized it open. And it wasn't rats he found inside. But instead, lying amongst the carrots and the parsnips, was a leprechaun who was sleeping and snoring. And very gently he stirred the leprechaun awake. And the leprechaun said, Ah, for fuck's sake, where the fuck am I? This isn't Waterford. This isn't Boherboo. And Harry said, No, no, you're, you're in the vegetable market on Abbey Street. This is Dublin City. Ah, for fuck's sake, I fucking hate Dublin. Ah, would you not just send me home, please? I'd love to go home. And Harry he thought he had a very clever thought here. Well, he said, 
I'd have no problem sending you home at all if you give me your pot of gold first. And at that, the leprechaun gave Harry a look that made him not feel very clever at all. How exactly do you think I'm going to give you my pot of gold before you send me home to Boherboo? If I'm here in Dublin and my pot of gold is back in Boherboo. Actually, yeah, no, that makes sense, said Harry. Tell you what, Val, tell you what. I'll find another way to help you out. We can still help each other, Harry Stottle. Tell me, is your manager in today? As it turns out, Harry's manager wasn't in that day. So the two of them went up to the manager's office and the leprechaun, using his magic, unlocked the door. The two of them went inside and the leprechaun started searching around until he found the key to the cash safe. And with a bit of a twist and a bit of a turn, he disappeared the key. And the two of them left and the leprechaun locked the door behind him. The next morning, Harry went into work and it was chaos. When the manager had come in that morning, he had found that the key to the cash safe was gone. And he had been searching all through his office. He turned it inside out. He had searched all over the building. He called in every worker, had all of them searched. He searched all of their lockers. He could find nothing. It was gone. It had disappeared. And the police said there wasn't even any sign of a break-in or something. He must have just lost it. And so the manager offered a raise to triple the wages of whoever found the lost key to the cash safe. Now Harry, getting home that evening, he found the leprechaun sitting on the table and he explained everything. And the leprechaun said, Ah, fucking great, that's perfect, Harry. Shall you bring the key in with you tomorrow? The manager will give you your raise, and you can send me on home to Boherboo. And so he did. Harry, he brought the key back in the next morning, and he presented it to the manager, and the manager was delighted. He was filled with relief. He took back the key, and he put it on a chain that he kept around his neck so that he would never lose it again. And he said to Harry, Harry, I'll talk to the lads down in accounting. They'll have your pay tripled. From now on, you get triple pay. And Harry said, Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. That'll be lovely. But um, while I have your ear, I noticed something a bit strange with one of the delivery boxes we got from Waterford the other day. Car carrots have gone all black. Parsnips have gone all hairy. Like, much hairier than parsnips usually are. We should probably send it back. And the manager said, of course, Harry, of course, you go down there, you set the whole thing up, tell them I sent you, tell them I told you to do it, it'll be sorted out. And so Harry, once he left the manager's office, he called on the leprechaun, told him to get into the crate, nailed it back shut and had it sent back to Boherboo. And so you see how well we can do, when instead of trying to trick and scam one another, we practice just a little bit of class solidarity and get one over on the management instead. So do you still want to catch a leprechaun, Vulgeen? No, no I don't. Good. Have a fun day. Vulgeen, where are you going with that hammer? I, I'm just going to go build a guillotine so that we can seize the means of production from the bourgeoisie. Oh, Bulgine.